It doesn't, Jesus said, go, go to the temple and you'll be healed. It says they got healed while they were on the way to the temple. So they hadn't even gotten to the temple yet. So what that means is all they had to turn, turn, do is turn around and go a little ways back and thank Jesus for what he's done. But they didn't want to be con inconvenienced to turn around and co go back and thank the Lord. So they just kept on going. And only one out of the ten was thankful. Could that be a metaphor for the percentage of people that are truly thankful from their heart for all that God has done for them? Could it be that nine out of ten people aren't counting their blessings, aren't acknowledging all that the Lord has done for them. And here's a mind-blowing scripture. It says that the Lord is good and kind to the unthankful and the evil. That's a mind blow right there. Because we like to think at least when I was in Sunday school, I thought it was kind of like a Santa Claus deal. If you are good and you are thankful, you're going to get a present. And if you aren't good, you're getting cold in your stocking. See, that's you see that sounds like Satan Claus to me. Not Santa Claus, Satan Claus, because. See, God, it says God is good and kind to the unthankful and to the evil. Now, the reason I share that is it's in the Bible, but you get to look it up. If you don't believe me, you can go on your phone and ask Siri, where is the scripture in the Bible where it says God is kind to the thankful and uh, unthankful and to the evil? And you'll find it. And this is why Jesus said, love your enemies and even be good to those who are being good to you. Why? So that you will get a blessing. So that you will be blessed. If you, you don't do it for their sake, you do it for your sake. So that you'll, it says that because we were called by God to inherit a blessing. But it says that we're supposed to be blameless before the Lord. And what does it mean to be blameless before the Lord? What does that really mean? It means... You're not hurting anybody, and you're not doing anybody wrong. You're not trying to get revenge on anybody. You're not trying to pay anybody back. You're not holding a grudge against anybody. And you're not counting all the wrong things that have happened in your life and making a list of that. You're doing the opposite. You're counting your blessings. And when you do this, your mind will flip over into the right kind of thinking. And the right kind of thinking of the Bible is called the mind of Christ when we're thinking the right way. You see, because when we look at things the wrong way, then we get a negative mindset and then that starts to cause us to spiral it down. And this is why God even made a point of saying that vengeance belongs to God and he will repay and he'll make sure that everybody gets their due. So if you have not been treated fairly, if you have not been paid your due, God will see to it that you, you get what's fair to you. I remember there was a time in my life, it was actually 20 years ago, and um, it, it's just a little thing, but it was a big thing in my heart. Um, I had just been through a situation where a person had borrowed a large amount of money from me. I'm talking thousands of dollars, not a little bit. And they just informed me in an email, because that's easier, right? That they were not going to pay me back that money and there was no way that they could pay me back because they just didn't have it and that they're not going to pay me back. Have you ever given or loaned money to somebody and they said they'd pay you back and they didn't? If, you, if you've had that happen, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but if you've had that happen, this message is for you. Because in the Bible it says when you loan, 
Don't expect to get paid back. When you loan money to a person, don't expect to get paid back. That's in the Bible. Uh, that's why it says give expecting nothing in return. And so if you can't handle not being paid back, don't loan the money. When we loan money to people, there's no guarantee that that person will pay us back. But here's the awesome scripture from the Bible. It says, when we loan to others, when we loan to the poor, we do it from a right heart. And we give to those who can't give back to us. It says the Lord himself will pay us back. The Lord himself will pay us back. And so during this time when um, what's going on in my life and I said that this person owed me a lot of money and they just they just said I'm not going to pay you back and they didn't even seem to be sorry about it. That was, you know, that, that makes it even harder, right? I'm not paying you back, just so you know. And so I decided to forgive that debt and it wasn't long after I walked in to a club in the evening um, to hear some bands play. And a person comes up to me and says, we're, we're, we're having a drawing tonight for a free guitar. Go get a ticket. I, I didn't even know that was going on. So I got the ticket. You know what happened, right? I want a free guitar. And it was just like, here, have a... It was just like God was saying, I know you've been on the job. Here, Jeremy, have a free guitar. Do you think God does stuff like that? Yes. Do you think he'd go out of your way to just bless you? And notice it was... He, he, he didn't give me a free chainsaw. Okay? Now, if it was my brother, God would get, give him a, a free chainsaw because he has a workshop and tools and stuff. But my point is God knows what you like. He knows what, what matters to you. And he'll go out of his way to see that you get blessed if you keep your heart right toward others. Um, and that means being blameless. It says being blameless before God. But also when you keep your heart right, your faith is you're thankful even when things don't look good. When it think, looks like things aren't going your way, you can say, God, I know things look like they're not going my way. In fact, it looks like there's no way. But it says that God will make a way when it seems like there's no way. That's why it says he'll make a smooth path in the desert. God will make a smooth path in the desert and streams of living water in the desert when there is no water. So God's like your oasis and he brings these things to us. And so as we look at all this, we need to be thankful for what God has given us and be thankful for what he's called us to do. And the thing I'm going to share about today is in Corinthians chapter 12. And that chapter is a revelation because it says that God made us intentionally different, all of us different from each other. And he intentionally gave us different gifts. And why is this so important to understand? Because the most miserable people I have ever met are people who aren't content with the gifts God gave them and are wanting someone else's gift and wishing they had the gift that someone else had. And the Bible says to be content with whatever you have and what God's given you. And, you know, so you don't wish, oh, I wish I had that person's talent or I wish I had that person's looks or any number of things we could go into. Why? Because God's given you exactly what you need for your purpose, your calling, and your mission. So let's, let's actually read some of this chapter because we don't need to be ignorant, do we? And ignorance comes from lack of the word of God. 
We just don't understand. I don't understand why God didn't make us all the same. It's not fair. How come that person gets to be tall and I'm short? It's not fair. Well, my wife and I had five kids and they're all different heights. And they're all very different. Where they come from the same mom and dad, but they are sure different. And so let's look at uh, chapter 12. This is Corinthians. He says, now concerning spiritual gifts, I would not have you to be ignorant. So see, he starts right off and he says, don't be ignorant. God made you to look the way you look because that's what he chose and it's perfect. God gave you the talents that he wanted you to have and it's perfect. And so we're going on, we'll read some more. And let's go down and go to verse uh, six. It says there are a variety of operations, but it is all the same God which works all in all. So there's, there's a whole lot of variety out there. And if it's not your cup of tea, don't say that it's not of God because maybe it's just not your cup of tea. It's not your taste, it's not what you like. That's okay, you don't have to like everything. But here again, it says there are a lot of varieties of, of operations and gifts, but it's all the same God that works all in all. And then it goes on to verse seven and it says, the manifestation of the spirit is given to every person to profit everybody. So the gifts that God gives you, the talents you have are given to profit everybody. And this is a secret to happiness because some people are using their gifts strictly to profit themselves. That's a mistake. And one of the ways you can tell if the person is using the gift to profit themselves is if they'll only use their gift if they're getting paid money for it. Because if you say, I'm not doing nothing for nobody, if I'm not getting paid, then you are limiting your gifts. And this is why Jesus made a point of saying, you cannot serve God and money. Because if you serve money, you will only do certain things because of the money. And then who's calling the shots? The money. The money's calling the shots. So somebody comes to, to me and says, Jeremy, will you uh, do my wedding? And you know what I say? Yeah. I don't say, how much do I get paid? And if they want to pay me, it's fine. And if they don't, it's fine. But are you willing to come to this place of saying, Lord, I realize that all I have and all you've given me is for the purpose of blessing others and not just to bless myself. And our society has taken gifts that people have and turned it into an industry to make money. This is a sad thing. So let's read on. So what are some of the gifts that God gives us? We go down to verse eight. For to one is given the spirit of the word of wisdom. Do you know when you have wisdom, you're able to make good choices. Then it goes to the next and it says to other is given the word of knowledge by the Holy Spirit. So knowledge is the information that you need in order to do the right thing and to make good choices. And this is really important, isn't it? For example, you need wisdom and knowledge when it comes to marriage. <laughs> you wanna marry the right person. All your business decisions, everything you do in life need word of knowledge, word of wisdom. That's a gift from God. 
It goes on to say that another gift is the gift of healing. And don't we all like that one? Now, some people have special gifts of healing. And when you ask that person to pray for you, they get healed just like that. I've seen people who have those gifts. And they're very important. Gift of healing. We all need to be healthy and well. And if you find out someone has a gift of healing, you should go to them and ask them to pray for you because you'll get your, you'll get your miracle because they have that gift. And it goes on and says there's other gifts. Gift of prophecy. People who know stuff that's going to happen in the future. Gift of prophecy. Very important sometimes. Information we need to know. And the other one is discerning of spirits. That's a gift. Can you recognize when a person has the spirit of God moving in them? And when the person has another spirit that's not from God? So did you know in this chapter, it tells you how you can know this. So I'm going to go up further in the chapter. And it says... In verse 3 of 12, 3, it says, I give you understanding that no man speaketh by the Spirit of God will call Jesus accursed. So if people are making fun of Jesus and they're cursing him, you know that's, that's not right. But then on the other side, it says... No man can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Ghost. And in the first century church, when Jesus warned that wolves were going to kind of sneak into the church and try to mess it all up, wolves in sheep's clothing, they had a way of testing people. And they would say, I want you to say this out loud. Jesus Christ is Lord. And the wolves and the, and the false prophets that were sneaking into the church couldn't say. They couldn't say it. They couldn't say it. So, what am I going to have us all say right now? Jesus Christ is Lord. Yes, let's say it. Jesus Christ is Lord. Louder. Jesus Christ is Lord. Wow, that's pretty awesome. And so we start to understand. So, so this is, I, I've tried this, this out. You want to try it out? Yeah. Okay, so a religious person comes to your door. And they start, they start, they're trying to convert you, right? And then so you say, do you believe in Jesus? Oh, yeah, we believe in Jesus. Okay, and, and are you Christian? Yeah, we're a Christian. And then I say, okay, well, say this with me out loud right now. And I've done this. Say, Jesus Christ is Lord. And the minute I say that, they start stepping back. And then they say this to me. Oh, I can't say that. And I say, why not? You said you're a Christian. Oh, I can't say that. Why? Well, we believe he was a very good man. He was a very good prophet. He was a very good teacher. He was a very good role model. He has lots of nice things to show you. Say Jesus Christ is Lord. And, and that'll send them. They're, they're down the driveway leaving. They decided they didn't want to convert me. Why? Because they are teaching a false gospel. And so I'm saying to you, it says that he who acknowledges Jesus as Lord, he who has the Son, has acknowledged who Jesus is, has life, has eternal life. He who does not acknowledge who Jesus is, does not have eternal life. And some people are offended with this, but Jesus said, blessed are those who are not offended offended with me. It's very interesting that all the other religions acknowledge Jesus. 
but they don't profess him as Lord necessarily. So this is where the difference is. And so this is how you can discern spirits. And there's a lot of nice people out there that just don't acknowledge Jesus. There's a lot of people who have been blessed by God who don't acknowledge that God has blessed them. And it's like what Peter shared. Ten lepers get healed, only one comes back and acknowledges Jesus and thanks him. So as we look at this, who decided what talents you have, and what skills you have, what abilities that you have? Who decided this? God. Yeah, God. God decided. Here's the scripture. All these things, he's talking about the gifts and talents, come from the one and self same spirit. This is Hebrew, uh, Corinthians 12, 11. Excuse me, Corinthians 12, 11. All these gifts come from the same spirit and the spirit divides to every person separately as he will. So God's the one calling the shots on your talents, your abilities, and you could say, if you want to put it this way, your deck of cards you got dealt. Some of them say, I just don't like this deck of cards I got dealt. Well, what are you going to do about it? Make the most of all that you've been given and use it to the fullest. Unfortunately, many people don't realize that the gifts have been given by God. And you can watch on TV when people get their trophies, their awards. And they say, I just want to say thank you so much. I worked really hard. And this is why I'm getting this reward. It's called an earthly reward reward so when we acknowledge God and we get a heavenly reward and so then it goes on and it talks a little more about the body and I want you to just think of the church as a body because the Bible says we're members one of another and that we need one another and we all have different gifts that are there to help one another so let's just look at the next part it says in 12:12, in the body is one and has many members and all the members of that one body are one and also in Christ. And then it says, and by one spirit, we are all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles or whether we be slaves or free, or we have all been made to drink into one spirit. So we're one spirit, one body, but then it says, but the body has many members. And that's the part where we're all different. And we've all heard about some people are like a hand, some people are like an eye, some people are like a mouth, some people are like a leg, and the Bible even says some people are the private parts. <laughs> it says it. You can read it. But we're all, it all matters. It all matters. It's all important. And it says, God has set the members, every one of them in the body, as it has pleased him. And so, where does the real freedom come? When you know who you are, you know what your place is in the body, you accept it, you don't fuss over it, and you go with it. And you don't try to change who you are if some people don't like it. Because not everybody's going to appreciate who you are and what God's given you to do. And if people don't, don't worry about those people because we are here to be a blessing and to just simply be who God made us to be. You can't be any better than being who God made you to be. And so the Bible says, shall the clay say to the potter, why did you make me this way? And I had one Christian say to me a while ago, he goes, you know, when God made me, I think he made a mistake. That's a sad place to be. Did you know that God doesn't make mistakes? 
people do, but God doesn't. So this acceptance of who we are and who we've been made to be is, is going to bring a peace in your heart so that you're not striving and, and fussing over different things. If God made you a mellow, quiet, laid-back person, go for it. And some people, they're a little louder, a little noisier, talk a lot more. doesn't mean they're wrong. They're just different. You've got quiet people, you've got noisy people. It's just like instruments. Some instruments are quiet. They're designed to be quiet. A nylon string classical guitar is designed to be quiet. That was not designed to be quiet. And some people are grabbing their head like this. But you get my point. And so, that's all I have to say about that today. If we can accept who we are and be, be happy with it, it's all good. And Kathy has a few announcements, and I want to announce that she's not in here right now, so i got some time to fill until she gets in here, but if, if somebody would please go get her. I don't want to stand up here and do stand-up comedy. That's not really my calling. Come on. But yeah, we have a few announcements. Just let me know what's going on this week. And um, I'm glad to see Deb and Pete here. They were in the hospital last night, and, and God, through prayer, did a quick turnaround. Other prayer requests, Tim and Sandra, um, Tim woke up and couldn't see. He was at the hospital and he found out he had a detached retina. So would you pray for that to be healed? I've already started on it, you can pick up, but I'm letting people know.